Praise be to Allah. You brothers are aware that this month our Silsila Ali and Naqshbandiya annual Ijtama conference is about to take place, will take place, Alhamdulillah. And because in this day and age, in this era, the situation is such that our yaqeen, our faith, our belief, our circumstances are in such a way and the conditions in the world around us are such that that truth and falsehood, we cannot distinguish between the two. We cannot realize what is reality, what is right and what is fake or what is false. And through what we can attain Allah's nearness, through what can we attain Allah's love, there's a mixture and a contamination of everything. Everything has become a, just a sort of a cultural habit or traditional action. Obviously, it's clear that when such an ijtama like this takes place, a conference, a get-together, and these occur throughout the year, various times and places, Allah, Allah knows best, Wallahu alam, Allah Ta'ala knows best, about everything, but in the company of my Sheikh, I learnt one thing for sure, and Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. Uh, uh, Hazrat Sahib's dua was included that as long as uh, I'm alive, that this habit should continue. And this was Hazrat Nasiha, his advice to me, his guidance due to the blessings of his company, his barakah, his direction. That this habit, this action, which is very beneficial, alhamdulillah, without this, our uh, order uh, would not succeed and continue. And that was, that Hazrat's direction was that your colleagues, he, Hazrat guided me that your colleagues, your students, even if you get five minutes company to sit with them or ten minutes, then always be careful about one point, that that company that you give them, that every colleague and student should benefit with regards to the akhirah through that company in that time that he spends in your company. Subhanallah. What a great point. Otherwise there's no need to sit down. If it's by chance you sit with somebody or... um, if it's a pre-prepared, uh, scheduled meeting, five minutes, ten minutes, or even if it's less than that, if there's only four individuals sat with you from amongst your colleagues, your associates, from your murids, students, then that majlis should be such that through yourself, through your company, they should get the benefit uh, for the akhirah, the hereafter. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you to account for this. This was uh, a person who was thirsty, he came to drink water at your, uh, in, your, in your midst, but instead of water, you gave him petrol or diesel. So what answer will you give to Allah? How will you account for this? So when a, a well is established, then there are responsibilities. And that well doesn't allow anyone to go back thirsty. Every pious elder says, every well, he says, come to me and, t- and put down the bucket, lower it down and bring, draw up the water and drink as much as you want to, to quench your thirst. So brothers, the ijtama, you will hear calls for ijtamas and conferences, but let me explain again. You, mashallah, pious people, pious brothers and, and people with love, I am not genuine at all. But alhamdulillah, I got great company in my life, sohbat of such a great personality, Sayyid Murshidi Mulai. He was the Qutb of his time, the Qayyum of his time, my Shaykh Hazrat Sahib, Rahmatullahi, that all non-genuine things he extracted from my heart. Subhanallah. So brothers, let's look here. Let's be uh, aware that this Ijtama hour get together uh, this month. I don't know what people think about it. Or I don't know what you think about it. And uh, you should be aware, like I am till now, that the objective of this Ijtama is not fame. It's not to spread our names. 
It's not to make ourselves look uh, 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 visible amongst others or to compete against others. Nor is the ijtama to get people to say, wow, excellent. Nor is it to gather masses of people. There's one objective, that those individuals, associates, colleagues who are attached to this silsila, that they depart this world and walk into Jannah smiling and laughing. You should have yaqeen of what I'm saying, subhanAllah. This ijtama is for you. Believe me. Believe me, this ijtama is for the murids, the students of Hazrat Sahib. Do you know where you are at this moment, where you are sat down, in which condition you are in, we are in? Yes, every moment, uh, shaitan and nafs, the attack is so strong that we cannot protect our iman, I believe, uh, our faith. I tell you the truth, we come to dhikr, but we are aware of our circumstances, conditions, that our eyes and the sins we commit and how we utilize our bodies, etc. But we've taken hold of the guidance of such a sheikh that he will not leave us thirsty, inshallah. This guarantee I can give to you. This guarantee I can give to you. You will go into paradise laughing and smiling, inshallah. Why? Because this is a dua of Hazrat Sahib behind me. Subhanallah. A great dua behind me. Do you remember? I read out a letter to you, a letter of Hazrat Sahib to you. The Hazrat Sahib said, Faruqi Sahib, consider Faruqi Sahib's company as a, a treasure. And this was not me. This is not my achievement. In this statement, Hazrat Sahib has instilled his tajalliyat, his brilliant effect, whether somebody accepts this or believes in this or not. Look, this is such a point. Reality that you are my colleagues and friends and I'm telling you this. It is my duty to tell you this. I am telling you the, I'm making you aware, I'm like a newspaper journalist, I have no shame or hesitation. I am giving you the good news for Jannah, paradise. I'll give you the good news for improving your circumstances. Why should I hide this? I'm not fake. I'm genuine. Whatever I heard from behind, before me, I will explain to you and share with you, subhanallah. You are not lost, alhamdulillah. You're not at loss. So this is for you. This is for you. And such karam, mercy of Hazrats, this is Hazrats karamat. This is his miracle. This ijtima get together conference. What is this? This is not from today. From the time that Silsila, the order, Naqshbandi order was founded, all of our Uli Allah and our pious elders, this is their tariqah, their methodology to have the ijtima. Two, I have seen two great personalities. Two great personalities. I saw for myself. Hazrat Fazal Ali Qureshi, Rahmatullah Ali. And then my Sayyidi Murshidi Mulai, Hazrat. Ali Murtaza Rahimahullah Ta'ala Qudusira That every year I attended myself the Ijtama And it was a fantastic uh, Ijtama that was taking place at that time Hazrat Sahib was present Hazrat my Sheikh And uh, Hazrat Fazal al Qureshi, His uh, um, grandson who came after him Who was his deputy But I'm telling you That Hazrat Fazal al Qureshi, Rahimahullah His deputy his official deputy, he'd come himself to my Hazrat Sahib's Ijtama annual. He'd, he'd come by foot. What was the reason for this? That why do we do this? Why do the Mashaikh establish the Ijtama? Why is this tariqah there? So what I'm saying to you is that we, I could not even imagine that such a great silsila Ijtama that we will also host this and establish this. Is this, if only you could see the barakah, the blessings of this ijtama. That such great mashayikh, our pious predecessors, they implemented this ijtama. We are establishing the ijtama here. We are preparing it and hosting it and implementing it. We cannot imagine. This is the reality I'm sharing with you. Why? Why? The reason for this is that the tariqa. This, the methodology of tasawwuf. This is totally unique. The paths to get to Allah are many, many, more than the number of breaths a person takes. And if you adopt that path, you'll get to Allah. But this special unique path of tasawwuf, the method, the path, the actions, this is unique. Very unique. And it's recommended by Allah. That's what Allah Ta'ala has announced in the Quran. Ya ayyuhaladina tukulla, kunu ma'asadikin. Allah Ta'ala says. Ya ayyuhaladina amrut tukulla, kunu ma'asadikin. Allah said that go to the pious people. Yes. And if Allah Ta'ala sends somebody into this silsila so that that person can reach to Allah, remember this. If Allah gives a person the opportunity to enter into the tasawwuf silsila so that a person can attain Allah's love and Allah's nearness, if Allah selects this tariqah and gives it to an individual, do you understand what I'm saying? That Allah Ta'ala selects a person. 
we are we were like animals and donkeys we didn't know what was sufism tasawwuf tell me did anybody know in bolton who is an naqshbandi what is tariqat they are all my friends i know everybody from before we used to say salam alaykum to each other we used to wander around in the masjid so what did they know what is silsila tasawwuf now tell me but today alhamdulillah praise be to allah allah knows best that which people are sat with what status i don't know but allah has blessed us in such a way with his mercy that Allah Ta'ala has assigned them the tariqah, the method for those people to reach to Allah's nearest that we cannot even imagine in this town, in this city. We didn't know them. Our forefathers and sisters didn't know. Our parents didn't know that who are these people, how are they, what will they do. Nobody had the ilm of this, the knowledge of this great order, the Naqshbandi order. Allah Ta'ala selects the people, special people for this path. And through this path, Allah Ta'ala wants to give his marifah. Allah Ta'ala says there are great maqams in Jannah, levels in paradise. Allah will send people who will attain that through various methods. But the, the method that's addressed in the Quran and the Hadith and from the blessed statements of the Sahaba, that's the most unique way to get to Allah's nearness in Jannah. This is a totally unique and separate method. So maybe Allah Ta'ala would have put us onto the deen via a different method through ibadat, worship or mujahidat and uh, strong effort. But subhanAllah Allah has given us that tariqah which is the most beloved method and practice in the eyes of Allah. Yes, the tasawwuf and silsla ali and The principle of this tariqah, for every action there are principles and the foundation principle of tasawwuf. The foundation of tasawwuf, through which the salik, the student travels to Allah by the guidance of his teacher. And I repeat this many times, every mashayikh, they, the shaykhs, they, they emphasize on this so that you don't forget the lesson, the student. Through this we get to Allah. Dhikr adhkar doesn't take us close to Allah. The main point, through which the salik, the traveler, the seeker, reaches to Allah, is rabta shaykh, connection with the shaykh. Say subhanallah, the relationship with your teacher, the connection with your teacher. The mashayikh, the pious predecessors have taught us, this is such a great path, that he should have a strong connection, his belief, his love, his obedience, his khidmat, his aqidat, atat, muhabbat, khidmat of the shaykh should be so strong, that he should be immersed totally into his teacher's ways and, and methods. That is, my husband sahab said this, that the more the, the rabt of the student is strong with the teacher, the more Allah's mercy and for use and, and barakat and blessings rain down on the student. And this is attained very with difficulty. It's easy to do dhikr, one thousand tasbih, two thousand tasbih, do this much, do that much, do maraqaba, silent dhikr. But this establishing the connection with the shaykh, rabta is very delicate at the same time, this path. Within a second it can break. This rabta shaykh, that 10 years if you've strengthened that path. But what is it? It's so delicate. Mahazad used to say, this is so delicate, so delicate, that with, it, does, it could take us, within a second, life can be spoiled and everything can be destroyed. That connection. So the key point of this, that this is the key, this is the point through which Allah, a person gets to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, this ijtama, the ijtamas that are founded, the hikmah, the wisdom, the objective is only this, that the murids, the students, that from all of the mashayikh gram, that they can strengthen the connection with all the mashayikh in the order, in the silsila. Because this silsila, uh, this ijtama is in the name of our pious elders. And when it's in their name, then the rahmas, the mercies, the blessings that come from their direction, that rain down. Automatically, the salik, the, the, the student, the current of their mercy and blessings runs through that student. When the ijtama will take place, uh, my Hazza Sahib's company, when Hazza Fazal Ali Qureshi Sahib's ijtama, when a student would return after the ijtama, he would return as if he's just come back from paradise. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You will see this yourself that after the ijtama, such nur and light comes into a person, such a light, such a ray. What is that? The illumination that so many mashayikh. Why is that? That we sit and do the ijtama. Collectively, we are commemorating, remembering the, the, the mashayikh and we are attaining their blessings and their fuyus and their mercies. This is the foundation point. But because mashallah today, the time we're in, the day we're in, the age we're in, especially in this country, it was necessary. It was impossible that we could host such a, an ijtama. No one has the capability or the courage to um, prepare this, establish a very big duty, very big task, and I don't do it. Unless the, 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 the desire, the order is in the heart. I don't say, uh, the Idris brother, he, he, he comes after me and asks, that, are you prepared? Should we hold the ijtama? I say, no. I give the go-ahead at that time, alhamdulillah, when the order comes that initiate, proceed, for the ijtama. Subhanallah. 
So now he's understood my habit, and then I don't know what the date will be, because obviously the people of the masjid are busy. He said, I knew when I went to him to ask for a date, uh, he said, I knew you would come out of, uh, when, when, you, when you knew you had to come. So I've selected three dates. And he gave me the three options. I said, we can host it on the 25th, the Ijtama. So as I said, that there's no uh, non-genuity in this. It's not fake. I don't have the strength. And uh, I could never prepare or host such a great gathering like this. But Allah's for you, the blessings, the mercies. What are the mercies that descend in this is? Well, I'll give you an example. There are hadith that relate to this, link with this. That if you feed somebody, or assist to feed somebody, or if you serve somebody, there are many hadith with regards to this. What can I say to you about the hadith? Allah's Nabi says, what has he stated about this? Isn't it? Uh, to to serve and treat the guest nicely if you have a guest and you are feeding him and the many hadith this is the the luggage for forgiveness to serve the guest well to treat the guest well now if I ask you a question that such a guest comes whose guest is he who is the guest of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ask you this question he is the guest of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radhiyallahu he is the guest of Hazrat Salman al Farsi radhiyallahu he is the guest of the Shah of Naqshband he is the guest of Mujaddid al Afthani he is the guest of Hazrat Khwaja Masum. He is the guest of Hazrat Mirza Maza Jana. Tell me. Tell me what a great guest he'll be if you have such a guest like this. Yes? Brothers, you can estimate yourself. Gauge it yourself. What a great guest he will be. And he, uh, to treat him, to host him, will be the reward. What uh, I speak spiritually, not physically with regards to the world, because this um, is not related to the world that my shop will start running, my business will flourish. No, think about the akhirah, the hereafter. That whether you can feel or not, whether you've attained that thing or not, but you'll attain it, what is that? I'll give you the example. I'll give you the example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes uh, shows the reward in the world and shows the punishment in the world. I've seen this with my own eyes, the punishment for interest, and I've seen this. That, that it was meted out. The person who consumed riba and how he died. I saw this. The hal, the condition. Mukhtalif different adab, punishments Allah Ta'ala demonstrates and shows. Allah reminds the what I've said in the Quran, this happens. Look at this person, he consumed interest, riba, you accept? Look at his death, how he died, how he passed away. Yes? In the same way, Allah Ta'ala shows thawab, reward. You know, for example, we say that this is the thawab for this action, this is the thawab for uh, hosting a guest nicely, treating the guest nicely. How much thawab is? Allah Ta'ala demonstrates that, shows that. As a baqi billah, rahmatullahi, a guest came to him at the night time, at the time of night. And as a baqi billah had nothing there to serve the guest for eating. There was a nanbai near to Hazabaki Bila Sahab. You understand nanbai who runs a tandoor, who bakes the naans, cooks the naans. And he had love with Hazrat. He said, oh, I've got a good chance today, good opportunity. And these are people who knew, in reality, that when in the heart, when a person knows the, the, the status of a wali wala, he knows that I will get them the reward for this. He has yaqeen. Said to thee that I will get the return. I've heard that when you serve a wali Allah, etc., you have a relationship with them, then they're for you, the barakat are immense. So he went. Hazrat Sahib was feeling a bit concerned, distressed that the guest is, there's nothing to feed him. And look at the reliance that Wali Allah has. He said, no, there's no food. Maybe you'll have to go somewhere else to eat. As a baki bila, he could have said that, but he didn't. He was distressed at that time. Been upset that how can I serve my guest? How can I give him some good food? So at that time, he came, the Nanbai, who ran the Daduri, said, Hazrat, your guest has come. Can I feed him some food? Give him some food to eat? Hazrat Sahib, uh, that, uh, shall I give some food to, to your guest from my hands? Um, and he, Hazrat Bakibah said, whatever you ask, I'll give to you. He said, okay, fine. He went and he fed the guest and he set him nicely, treated him nicely. And then he came and he said, Hazrat, the, can you give me that blessings and mercy that you mentioned? You'll give what I've asked for. Look at the reward. He got such a great reward that to assist the wali Allah, a friend of Allah, to feed the guest of a friend of Allah, the reward. What is the reward for khidmat service? To the guest, he got this root that he himself became Baqi Billah. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. He himself, the Nabi, became Baqi Billah. He attained the same maqam, the same level, his face, appearance, everything. The maqam of Hazrat Baqi Billah, Allah Ta'ala gave him. And who was Hazrat Baqi Billah? He was the Shaykh of Hazrat Mujaddad al Afani, Alhamdulillah. Now you tell me what a high maqam he must have had. What a great maqam he would have had. 
the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, due to the fact that he fed the guest of Hazrat Baqi Billah Sahib. So you brothers, my brothers tell me that if you he fed one guest of a dervish and he got the spiritual heights that all of the guests that will come, the guests of all of our mashaykh, our pious predecessors, and if we serve them and treat them nicely, then imagine the thawab we will get. I swear by Allah, this is what you get from these ijtamas. I swear by Allah, I tell you this clearly. Today you will not feel this. But tomorrow when the envelope will be opened and thereafter, that you assisted in the ijtama and served in the ijtama and, as, and helped in the ijtama and helped to feed so many people and you spent so much and this much you gave and this much time you spent and with the love you met everybody with affection, with one knee intention that this ijtama, this get together conference, alhamdulillah is for this purpose that we need to construct our akhirah. And Allah Ta'ala has given us the means via the ijtama. This is the meaning of the ijtama. Allah has given the means that my darwish will come to you. My, my, my followers and believers will come to you and you need to host them and treat them nicely. And this is the hikmah, the wisdom behind the ijtama, the, conf- the conference. So Allah Ta'ala says that from top to bottom, the, the, the rain of Allah's nur, it rains down. All of the Naqshbandi, all the sheikhs, their for use, their blessings and mercies rain down. For those who assist the guests and those who spend and those who attend, very quickly people are uh, benefiting. The person unconsciously, without any preconditions, says, Allah, such great guests are coming to your gathering. We are people of the world. If the door knocks now, and if the queen's guest comes, or somebody else's guest comes, or the police will come, the sirens will play, uh, they, they always come, the guest of the queen's come. People look for that person due to that connection. My brothers, this is a small example of the world I've just given to you. But those who have the nisbat, the connection with Allah, imagine if you are connected with them. Subhanallah. So if this announcement is being made at that time, the angels will announce that, that people are traveling by coaches and traveling to the ijtama. To where? Look, it is an ijtama. A conference, a get together. People will come. They'll be fortunate. But oh, people of Bolton, you are very fortunate, Ex- extremely fortunate. I tell you the reality, the truth. You are not the the guests. You are the hosts of this fantastic gathering, and all the people are coming. Allah Akbar. We are the guests. Allah Taala has made us the guests. Sorry, we are the hosts. Allah Taala has not made us guests, but that person benefits. Because nafs and shaitan, they always travel along with us. And they give us obstructions and barriers. So whenever Allah Ta'ala gives such a great, great thing like the, uh, the opportunity, then two feelings come. This is, uh, as a shaykh, I'm explaining this to you. One is you will have extreme happiness in your heart. Ishtama, ishtama, Allahu Akbar, mashallah. Everyone's happy, rejoicing. There's a happiness that's running through your veins. And in parallel, there'll be a feeling, a squeeze. Maybe a slight miserly feeling. And this happens with regards to things that happen in the world. If a guest coming to your home, there will be two opposing feelings. Emotion, mashallah, it will be enjoyable. We'll sit down together. And another person will feel, oh, it's difficult for me. What's this? He's wasting my time. I've got to do this and that. So every um, circumstance in the world, you'll have these two opposing emotions. This is the reflection of that person. What is he like inside? So, Allah's instructions and orders, when Allah Ta'ala gives rewards, so we need to look at these two opposing emotions. If from inside the, the rays of happiness are coming out, then consider that iman is kamil, complete. Allah Ta'ala has selected you for His love. And if your heart's feeling a squeeze, tightness, oh it's difficult, how can I do this? Then there's nothing forcing you to do. There's nothing forced. There's no charity system here. You don't have to be forced to do it. You don't have to ask for it. You don't have to be told to do it. There's no need, that person, he runs around, have you got something, can you give something? No, there's no need for this. Here, take as much and give as much as you can give. Subhanallah, subhanallah. If all your life you get, if you don't, maybe it could be possible, may Allah Ta'ala allow, maybe that Allah Ta'ala gives us this opportunity and we reject it, we're not grateful for it, Allah Ta'ala could take it away from us, strip us of all of this opportunity and give it to another sheikh. That, oh, you sheikh, you did this in your students and I'll take it away from these people. But Alhamdulillah, Hazrat Sahib's attention and focus on us that no sheikh of the world could do ijtama here apart from the marid of Hazrat Fazal al-Qurism there, Hazrat Ali Murta Zahra, uh, he was his student and his face is spreading it. That his, the, the khanka was made in his name the first khanka in Europe, the first ijtama was made with his instruction, oh you fakirs, brothers, students, you, your status is great, you won't feel this now. In this world you won't feel this or understand this, you'll realize in the akhirah. You pray salah, do you realize what a great action you've done? Do you know how many rewards are descending due to that one salah you've prayed? We don't know. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah ilahdi, reciting this, do we know? Do we feel? So what does that person become? 
the person recites this kalima, the, the sins, if he has the sins similar to the amount of foam on the surface of the sea, even they are all eliminated. Do you feel that? We don't feel that. We won't feel this what I'm saying, but remember what I'm saying. That all of the mercies, this is the great favor of the Mashaykh, Ram, great blessing of this, that they've given us an opportunity via the ijtama to get fairs, blessings, subhanallah. This is a tariqah method that we've been given, alhamdulillah, which, uh, through which uh, all the years ibadah worship put to one side, but that one night of the ijtama, the worship that we'll do in the form of the ijtama, that will be on the other side, and you can uh, uh, you can see the differences. So as being a sheikh, being your sheikh, I will request you, I won't instruct you, I won't push you, this is your choice, I'm your sheikh, but I will always explain and try to direct you to the good path. So what I'll say is that spend this time with love, and I'm saying this now, all day and all night, uh, uh, as long as your guests will be there, you should stay there with them, and work hard during that time with adab, with comportment, give them priority to the guests, food and clothes, lying down, tea, and meet everybody with love and affection. Remember one point that I'm saying, my friends, this is a great ijtama. We don't know how many people are going to come, thousands, ten thousand, five thousand, three thousand, we don't know, two thousand, however many come, however many. One thing be very careful about, very careful about, that uh, I explained this before as well, that amongst us, we should not be wasting time. The meetings we have, the, the gathering, it's not about wasting time. There should be no form of worldly talk, no business talk, no talk about weddings or functions or proposals or dunya. What do you do? What's your job? What's your employment? Oh, my daughter, I'm looking for a partner, this and that. Don't speak once about that. Your focus should be on what? Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Subhanallah. Karam, Allah, your karam, and we should be extremely grateful to Allah. You've made my life. What a great time you give to me. That I could not understand the level, the, 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 the greatness of this event that you've given to us. So one of my brothers, I will request that Allah Ta'ala, there's still two, three weeks left. Allah knows that how will health continue. But we've entered into that phase now. And when a person comes to a phase, the ilan, the announcement has been made, then consider Allah's karam and mercy has come to us. Allah Ta'ala give you health and afiyah. And alhamdulillah, may Allah give me goodness and health so that we can appreciate the guests who will come and the fuyus, the virtues, the blessings, the message. And this is the greatest dhikr at the time. Now tasbih dhikr will not benefit. Stop your dhikr. The greatest dhikr is this, the ijtama now. Preparing and hosting it and implementing it. Because for every action, there's a time phase. In Ramadan, the greatest action is what? Fasting, not hajj. You can't do hajj at that time. What will you do? You will keep the fast. Yes, it's selected. Allah selects an ibadah for a specific phase. So the ibadah that's coming now for us, for kids and students, through which Allah Ta'ala wants to give to us and, and shower us with His mercy. Before Allah gave us by His dhikr, by other actions, Allah will say, now sh- those shops, close those shops. Now another path I'm opening. There's such a path that all your life, you can put the lifelong ibadah to one side and you put this night that's coming, the ijtama night to the other side. Subhanallah. So it's your choice whether you feel tightness and squeeze in your heart, whether you're stingy or miserly or you're lazy. If the goodness of this is coming to your heart, if you're feeling the negatives, then do istighfar uh, in high quantity. Do dumb from me, Hazrat. Why is this was a whispering coming to me? Make me brave and advise me, direct me. That Allah has given me this night. May I not waste this night. And with your full effort and strength, prepare for this night to come. And uh, prepare nicely, host nicely, as you know, that there are different duties and tasks when the guests come. Um, there are different duties and tasks that we have to be implemented. Uh, we have to plan. There's pl- parking duties and hosting duties. And, and we should prepare very nicely according to the sunnah. The sunnah tariqah method is this. For example, let's say... Um, Mm, the parking duty, the parking uh, duty was be many people coming in vehicles. You, so you make a group that these are the parking attendants, and then select an amir, uh, a leader of that group. That this is our group leader. He will be the amir with four or five other brothers or more. And their duty for the four or five brothers, the group members, that the according to the amir's instructions, they will um, host the parking duties nicely. Somebody is preparing the food or serving the food or cleaning, etc. Everybody should consider one thing. Every brother should consider himself a khadim, a helper, serving, assistant. Doesn't matter what your status is, but consider yourself a khadim, an assistant. And according to your capacity, capability, implement these duties. Inshallah, uh, you can say this is our 
tariqah, the same tariqah, the dhikr we do, remembering Allah, this is also the same path. Just another task. It's changed form. The parents, but it's the same action. The objective is to attain Allah's qurbanis and rada, His pleasure. That's the tariqah, the method. Inshallah, I will do dua for you, and you also do dua. Wa akhru dawana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. بسم الله الرحمن الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين شفيع المرسلين تعالى يا سيد النبي والنبي الرحيم یا اللہ بیماروں کو شفا نصیب یہ خاتون بریڈ فور کی ہیں بہت نیک سال اور آج ہاسپٹل میں گئی ہیں بیمار ہیں ان کے لیے ان کے بچوں کے لیے دعا فرمائے اللہ تعالیٰ ان کے گھر میں بھی برکت دے اس کی صحت نصیب فرمائے اور جتنے حضرات بیمار ہیں اور مرد ان سب کے لیے دعا فرمائے اللہ پاک کو صحت دے اللہ تعالیٰ اپنا فضل فرمائے جو پریشان حال ان کی پریشانی کی دعا فرمائے اللہ تعالیٰ ان کے گھر کے معاملات کو بہتر فرمائے یا اللہ ان کے گھر کے حالات کو بہتر فرمائے اللہ تعالیٰ ہم سب کو سکون نصیب فرمائے یا اللہ ہم سب کو سکون نصیب فرمائے یا میرے مولا اپنے کرم سے پوری امت پر رحم فرما یا اللہ پوری امت پر رحم فرما عالم اسلام پر رحم فرما اے میرے مولا اپنی خاص توجہ نصیب فرما خاص رحم سے نوازتے میرے مولا وصل اللہ تعالی علی خیر خلقی محمد وعالی یزہ کی جمعین بی رحمت ایک یا رحم اللہ امین سبحان رب کرم بن عزتی امی صفون و سلام علی المرسلین والحمدللہ رب العالمین